But before we get to that, I have to ask a question. Why now? We've had a hundred years to examine the meaning of those statues. Why is, why is it coming up now? How did these statues become such an important movement in America in 2017? They're a useful starting point for something much worse than what they are ostensibly targeting in the in, to start. Right. So from what I understand, and I'm pretty sure this is true, um, a lot of these statues went up in the 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s during Jim Crow in the South. A lot of them went up uh, as, as uh, basically, I would argue, kind of a reminder to... To the ethnic peoples of the South, yeah. who's in charge. Know your place. Right. Right. And don't get too uppity, because right. you'll you you'll have to meet with us. You remember? You remember our power? That's kind right. of how I. So, read. knowing this history, uh, I am very much against these symbols in the South, and and wherever you find them within the you know throughout the United States, very much against them. I'm I'm against all uh, political statues and military but, statues, but that's yeah, another. But, but these have a specific kind of importance. I, I understand, generally speaking, you're against that, I, and I understand why. But these specifically have racial overtones to, you know, identify people and to tell them to know your place. Yeah, these and this specific America, ones. Yes. Yeah. And this America is a little bit more of the America for the people who put those statues up than for the people who are being targeted by the statue. So I have a problem with these things. They're not part of history. They're part of Jim Crow and the Dixiecrats. They're part of the Dixiecrats reasserting their racial agenda in the South. So the question is, all right, I get both sides. But the way they're going about it is completely wrong. Uh, uh, you know, one wants to pull them they're, all they're, down. They're, they're not going about it wrong. They're, Why is that? They're they're doing it in the way that that fulfills their agenda. So no, they're doing it exactly the way they need to do it to for their agenda. Their agenda, yeah. yeah I mean, for when my, you say for... wrong, maybe you mean if you're talking about some you know preservation of 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 a republic. Uh, yeah, and, from and that decency. perspective, yeah, well, and whatever decency. decency is. Well, and, and, and I, so for this, I have to share a personal story. Okay. One uh, that I had some notes here. Oh, you had notes? You actually you wrote notes it? for a show? I doing my notes. I can't believe you actually had notes oh. for a show. It's like, it's almost like you came prepared for a show, which yeah. is so, it's pretty amazing. So I didn't believe in miracles, but now I do. So I have a personal story. I I love the state of Georgia, and I like vacationing there. Uh, I like the people I find there. I always feel welcome, mostly. Um, and we were looking for things to do in Georgia, and we came across this huge stone in the middle of nowhere, just like north east a little bit of Atlanta. And we're going to go to the Atlanta Museums and to the aquarium and to Six Flags with the kids. So we go to this place called Stone Mountain to check it out. It's got, you know, a cable car that goes up to the top of the mountain. Fascinating. This stone is out in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by all this flat land. And from the top of the stone, you can see Atlanta and the entire countryside of Georgia. It's an amazing place. Except when you get there, you realize this entire park is a Confederate memorial to all the states that participated in the war on the Confederacy from the Confederate side. And as we're going in there, I'm like, oh, wow, this is a Confederate memorial. I don't get it. Why is there a Confederate memorial? The Confederates lost this war. I don't get why there's a huge memorial carved into this stone. And all around it, this is kind of weird, but cool at the same time. And then 
I'm looking around and we're in the hotel and I say to my wife, 80 to 90 percent of the people working here are young black kids. Yeah. 80 to 90 percent. I remember you told me about this at the time. Of of the people using this park are black. And there's maybe 10 to 15, 20 percent at the most of whites mixed in with other people's working at this park, using this park. And I'm thinking to myself, wow, this is genius. Instead of the elders of Atlanta going to this park, which was put up at the, I'm sure at the beginning of the 20th century and saying, you know, we don't like this. They've taken ownership of it and they're training their young professionals with the exact thing that was designed to put them in their place. Yeah, they've definitely, <laughs> they've turned it, What its original intent, is, instead of uh, being a reminder of the power over them, has become a source of power for them. In the hotel, all of the young people there were learning how to manage a hotel, how to run the operations, um, proper customer service. You can tell these were young professionals in the making. These kids really had it together. And I felt such a great sense of pride that here, in a, something that symbolized something so horrible was turned on its head and made something so practical and so positive and uplifting for these kids. It's a place to learn. And there was the hotel, there was the golf course, there were the restaurants, there was the, um, there was like an amusement park for the kids and like a, a little outdoor shopping mall. Every single one of them was populated by young professional black kids learning how to be business people. Okay. So. And the wisdom to that is striking and for me, it's a juxtaposition against the stupidity in Charlottesville and wanting to rip down these statues. My belief is that they shouldn't be ripped down. I think they should be, the artwork should be recommissioned to incorporate the original sculptures into something very different, into something that really documents the history of the South and really documents the history of America. Yeah, I, I don't give a crap what happens to the statues one way or another. Yeah. Uh, and I definitely don't want to see tax dollars going to fund or pay for... It doesn't have to be tax any dollars. Any of this. Right. You, you, you know, if you private funds, whatever you want to do, what what you want to do. But to me, the statues, they're, they're a focal point, uh, but they are not the real issue. The statues are an entry point for both sides to have a conversation. Uh, and they intend on having this conversation uh, with, uh, with, with blood, uh, with, with, with force. So the conversation that I believe is beginning to emerge is really a conversation between two emerging collectives that we've seen many times in the past. Well, and I would say, um, and you heard me say this earlier today, that uh, I've been listening to Th Thucydides, the Peloponnesian Wars. Um, uh, it's a book, it's an audio book that I've been listening to. And um, there's something called the Thucydides Trap. The, 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 I can't even say it. The Thucydides trap. There, get it out. Thucydides trap. Yeah. And what it what the Thucydides trap is, is when you have a well established state or country that has to contend with a uprising and you know fast moving and quickly developing new power or state. 
there will always be a war. Always. Has been. Every time. Whenever Since you have basically a new power that wants what the old power has. Correct. And that's what and we have going on actually on multiple fronts right now, wouldn't you in, say? And in at multiple levels in nationally, multiple play places around the world. <laughs> nationally and internationally. And what I see is you have the old guard in America that is established and used to have the predominant amount of wealth is now being challenged by a new culture that's emerging in the United States that is becoming wealthy and in many ways wealthier and is being championed by people who run and own Google and Yahoo and Amazon and go on down the line. Um, see, I, I don't quite see it the way you do. I, um, and, I, and I think I see... The Thucydides, it's not really that the, what, what, what the Thucydides trap is seeing is really uh, the over and over and over again emergence of this conversation that humanity has been having with itself for a long time. And in, in the mix of that conversation, we think that we're we're having a conversation about individualism versus collectivism. And, and I would argue that the conversations have largely been almost exclusively collectivism. And that even a lot of ideologies that claim uh, individualism, in the end, they keep getting co-opted <laughs> and usurped by a collectivist ideology and, and and this 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 is kind of new thinking for me. So maybe a month from now I'll look back and I'll be like, I don't know about this, Paul, but I, I'm kind of starting to see a pattern that has to do with heroes versus healers, I'll say. And that is on one side it is this notion that in order for humanity to advance to its fullest potential, and everybody's they're always, you know, they're if, all, all, all of these these powerful nation states that have this nationalism. Almost all of it is framed around we are the best for humanity. We will rise all of humanity up with us, and it's 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 this notion of the hero versus the healer approach. And the healer hero approach is we must create an environment in which the greatest of the greatest amongst us rises to the top and pulls everybody along. And those who are weak, we leave them behind. We don't care about them. But on the other side is the healer. And that is we must heal the broken and the downtrodden and the weak. We must do what we can to level the playing field and lift the weak up. And by doing that, humanity becomes its better self. And if it means that we sacrifice some of our best, some of our heroes, so be it. And America has had this schizophrenic uh, trend. It, it, it has both been healer and hero. It has an ideology. Uh, uh, I would say it's largely mythical. It's largely not being lived out. But it has an ideology of, of, of individual liberty, which is... Uh, it's it, on one hand, it 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 lauds the greatness of the individual, and on the other hand, it appeals to sacrifice for the good of the nation. So it's it's got these two two conflicting ideologies: American nationalism and American individualism, and it's coming to a head. That's what I see happening right now, and both sides, whether they know it or not, are totally collective in their thinking their primary concern is it, the individual serves the collective it's not the collective enables the individual to be their best but the yeah, but individual which, enables the collective to be its best well it's but which collective are you a part of that's the problem well, well and well, for me if you're the heroic collective you are the best of the best and 
the brightest of the brightest, and you are you are the you know the survival ones, the ones that get stuff done, and you must clear clear everything away so that the hero can do heroic work. So the collective that you're part of, you tend to become part of a a probably a more nationalistic uh, uh, collective. Uh, if you're part of the the he healer collective, if you will, you you tend to have a broader notion of what the collective. You you tend to be more. You're you're, you're looking at all of humanity and lifting all of humanity up. While the hero collective is looking at this one certain part of humanity. That will be the great part that will then lift all of humanity up. These are the thoughts I'm having lately. And, 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 and a lot of this is coming out of what I'm seeing from Charlottesville. Uh, and what I'm seeing from, really from the conversations that are emerging. I mean, I, I happen to be connected to, I guess, you, you know, the anarchist community. I'm connected to the libertarian community. Uh, conservative community. I'm not so connected to the progressive community, so I can't see what's happening there. But in these communities, uh, in, in, within all of these communities, I am seeing this dialogue emerging. Nazis versus commies. It's everywhere. You are either a Nazi or you're a commie. And you must define everyone that is in this broad group as being a Nazi if, if, if you're left-leaning, I'll say. And if you're right-leaning, you must define everyone that's in this other group as being a commie. And what they both have in common is commies are absolutely detestable. And you should be throwing them out of helicopters. And on the other side, Nazis are totally detestable and you have to punch a Nazi. It is, it is a dehumanizing approach to the other side and you want to define the other side by as broad a term as possible and i believe it's because america is preparing itself for war and what's amazing to me is that the anarchists are participating in this conversation the anarchists are enabling this conditioning they're a part of this this preparing the ground when you say when you say war you're talking talking civil, civil war Civil War. Yeah. Not Korea. No, no, not Korea. Not No, no, this isn't America united against the common enemy. And what's really interesting is, you know, you, you can, if you look at, at, at these narratives that whoever is in charge or whatever that is, these narratives that they've tried to push, you know, it's uh, Russia, it's uh, China, it's Korea. You know, there's not huge support from the left or the right for any of that. It's it's it, to me it's and certainly not among anarchists and libertarians, but but it seems to me that what you're seeing is America, the zeitgeist of America, realizes at some level, at some very I say it collectivist level, that this is an issue that America can no longer be schizophrenic on. It must decide: is it a hero? Is it a healer? And and both sides of the camp are saying you can't be both. You're either a hero or you're a healer. Let's settle this. And if we can't settle it, then one of two things is going to happen. One side is going to totally murder the other side, or you're going to see a breakup of what you know as America today. Well, those are some pretty bold words. Yeah. Do you disagree with them? Um, I have mixed feelings. I don't. Look, I think that... I, oh, by the way, I, I do want to add real quick. I am not talking... None of this is inevitable, but it's it's approaching inevitable, I believe. Look, I think there are powers um, that want to see that. And I think there are internationalist movements that want to see America get its comeuppance. Sure. For what it's... for Whether it's perceived or real for what it's done to the world... And, you know, if you add all the good stuff America's done versus all the shitty things that America's done, you know, where do you end up? Who the hell knows? But there is a perception amongst internationalists that America needs to get, like, her knees taken out. And Nothing would I think please them more. Right. So I think um, they are pushing both sides into these camps 
the extremists on both sides into these camps. And that's the scary part for me because there are people who I talk to who are on both sides of the camps who take like as soon as you start the conversation like can you believe these nazis they they should all be massacred right i'm like whoa whoa and can you believe these fucking communists they all need to be thrown out of helicopters just like you're saying right and whoa whoa and then you start talking and saying really do, do you see all of those people who were in that march as being nazis I can see a lot of sympathizers, but I bet you if you sit down and talk to most of them, you can woo them, woo them. You can wean them off of the stupid ideology. I don't think they're not. I, I don't agree with you there. Oh, I, I don't see human beings as being monsters and unteachable. And I see and I look at the other side and I see the antifas and I see the same fucking thing. They're the they're, they're just as bad. And I have to look at them and say, well, they are creatures of God. They were created by God and they are teachable and you have to reach out to them. And the more I talk, why, to people, why do I have the to less... reach out to them? Why do I have I'm to reach out to anyone? Have... Well, yeah, I do. Because I'm not going to throw people out of helicopters and I sure don't want to be well, mad. I don't want to do that either. Because sooner or later, sooner or later, you're going to be thrown into a camp whether you like it or not. Yeah, un un unless you unless you actually pick a side. Well, no, and, that's what I mean. Whether you pick a side or not, you're going to be forced to pick a side. Yeah, or because if you don't pick a side, you're going to end up behind one of those lines. Uh, right. And they're going to be looking at who's with us. So, yeah, <laughs> if I don't you want ain't with us, you against I us. I am not picking a side between two retards. I'm not. And and putting my my future in the hands of retards. Uh, I would prefer to educate and talk to the retards on both sides and say, look, you're wrong and I can prove it. And the more I talk to people, the less uh, antagonistic they become. I'm like, dude, you, you, you do realize you're being set up. You do realize that both sides are being set up. You do realize that you're supposed to hate each other. You get that, right? You're being coerced into this position you're being forced to take a side yeah what's and, interesting and is on either side there's all kinds of divisions within those sides they're not all alike by the way not all antifa is communist not all of the e even people who have identified as being all right not all of those are nazis now i am seeing a lot of the folks that have previously identified as alt right that are now saying you know what look this word is totally Whatever, whatever it was, whatever we thought it was, it's now pretty much come to mean white supremacists, white nationalists. We're out. So you see, a lot of people are like, "No, no, no, we're done with the alt right label." Right. But it's 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 a, it's it's complex. Uh, there within the the hero collective and the healer collective, there are plenty of variations. And within those hero and and and, and uh, healer collectives, you have bitter rivals you're you're not looking at i don't think that anybody's going to be able to hold one of these coalitions together uh, uh for any any period of time right and so when cooler heads prevail um dude we've been through this i mean we a, a couple of years ago people were shooting cops and a couple years before that there were riots in big cities and a couple years before that it's it's all redirection of the masses. Like, that's all it is. I mean, dude, it's look at Tulsa, Oklahoma, for God's sakes. We've covered the, the Tulsa. Newspapers, the We've newspapers got it. people so wound up about nothing that people were murdered in the streets over the, the, nothing. The, over this happens, I think, some lies. Well, it, it, just uh, for the people who don't know. Uh, it happened somewhere in the 1920s. We covered it, and uh, it was, uh, I forget the name of the exact community, but it was in Tulsa, Oklahoma. It was a black community. It was called the Wall Street of, of Black America, basically. They were doing incredibly well. They were an economic powerhouse. And by the way, that's when you start to get targeted when you're an economic. When you start messing with economics, that's when people come after you. So newspapers started to, to basically write these false stories about some black person who was a member of this community raping a white woman 
And they just kept hammering away and hammering away. And then finally, they whipped up all the white folks around them to a frenzy. And they went after the blacks. Now, as it so happened, the blacks were armed. But they weren't armed well enough because they had guns. But it turns out the whites, they ended up having the power of the state behind them. So they were using helicopters and machine no, guns. No. and They were using airplanes air, from or, World sorry, War right, I. Right. Air, I'm sorry. Airplanes. Yeah. So they went they to the— They bombed they, them. Yeah. They went to the National Guard and got airplanes that were used in World War I. This is in, I think, 1921 or 1927, maybe 27. And they were using warplanes to bomb the town. So— and who caused this? The fucking media, the lion sacks of shit, who were supposed to get the, the, our the media. The me yeah, the media has always been okay. It happened in 1921, and it was in uh, the community of Greenwood. And if you've never heard about the Tulsa race Watt riot, wow, Google it and uh, yeah. maybe way don't to go, Google American it, but, school uh, system. Yes, yeah, yeah. I I never heard so, about this till much later dude, in life. The fake news, and it is fake news from both sides, keeps getting pumped into people's ears, and people are taking sides. And eventually, the truth comes out, and the ship blows over. Well, I'm hoping that the truth comes out, and people with cooler heads prevail, and the ship blows over. And it's just a passing phase, just like so many other things were. But if it's not, the best advice I have for anyone based on our show, Full Auto, is don't get involved. The people who thrive after this stupid shit are the people who stayed neutral and didn't get involved. No, no, the people who stayed neutral while they were behind enemy lines got killed first, actually. The neutrals get killed first. Don't don't get involved means get out get where wherever there are unsettled zones, you want to go there. Well, you, that's what I mean. Yeah. I'm not saying to stay in the belly no, of the No, because if you stay and, there, you will yeah. be targeted. You will no, be killed. By by the mean by the definition of don't get involved is run for where they aren't. And and yes. by they any anybody that has uh, uh, either a belief that they can kill the other person because of a thought, correct? Then get the heck away. They from are them. fundamentally evil. And I am not a pacifist. If you're coming to my house to screw with me, I'll put a bullet in your eye, and I won't think twice about it. But I'm not going to kill somebody because their belief system. I, I just that is not my belief system uh, i believe in live and let live but if your belief system says i have to be rounded up in cattle cars and taken to concentration camps then i'm gonna come out fighting yeah yeah and you know but don't get involved just stay armed and prepared and stay the fuck out of the way. Stay armed and supplied. And yeah. if you don't have the skills, I mean, even I don't have all the skills that I need to have. So I'm trying to work on developing the skills. But it, you need to have the the skills to be able to take care of yourself. So what do you, let, go ahead. Just to, to put this a little bit into perspective. In the South, back in the early 20th century and mid 20th century, come to think of it, you had something called the KKK. And it was a force to be reckoned with for a very long time. And people had to deal with it, particularly black people who were the targets of this thing. Um, over time, though, as minds changed and ideas changed, the federal government targeted the KKK and pretty much destroyed it. You know, the, the government is not going to let pure chaos reign. I, you know, if you had asked me a week ago, you know, what do you think the chances of our, of a civil uh, disturbance is going to be where people take arms and do stupid shit? I'd say, I would have said maybe 30, 40, 45%. Today, after seeing all of this, I actually have a better outlook. I think you're maybe 20% max. Why because is that? Because, uh, look, it's just not the right dynamics. You have 
the guys who got involved in all of this who are now backing out and saying, hey, man, I, I just, you know, the police want me. You can come and get me. I don't I don't want to be out here Dude, the minute you start telling people that you're going to take their homes, that you're going to review their income taxes, that you're, you're going to target them by the full force of the state with the FBI and every other security force, um, they're going to bitch up. No one wants to lose their home and no one wants to spend 10 years in prison for, for God knows what. And this guy that ran the, those people over, he deserves what he's going to get. That was completely uncalled for. Well, Killing people and hurting people. Sorry, I can't be sympathetic to you. See, I, I believe that you're wrong. And the key reason that I believe you're wrong is the, the level of power that the state has to interfere with our lives is incredibly high. And the differences between the groups that want to hold that power, it's, it's an existential divide between the groups. One or the other group will need to have control. And when they do have control, they're going to have an incredible amount of power that I believe they're, they're all more than willing to to use on the other side sides whatever the case might be and now i think that when larger groups of people start to feel that threat that suddenly a collective courage will begin to emerge and that the only way that this is going to be uh avoided is if the state especially the federal government steps back and retreats from the power that has been steadily encroaching upon, because the, the stakes are just too high, and 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 you're and they're and they're talking about uh, fundamentally denying people their the way that they want to live and the way that they want others to live. Well, first of all, if you think if you're using the state to try to get others, and that's that's another problem in and of itself. How many people are using the state on all sides? are using the state to try to get others to live the way that they think that they should live. If you're doing that, you're you're doing it wrong. <laughs> but well, I I I see it differently. I I see the reality and for me the reality is this. Uh, a couple years ago, we had these people in Nevada whose ranch was being taken away from them by the federal government and they had a bunch of People show up with guns and the federal government retreated. Well, guess what? All those people now, they're in jail. Sorry to say. Yeah, and they're losing their farm. It's a small, and, small, small group. I, I agree. But it wasn't a small group that showed up on the farm. And a lot of those people are being prosecuted. The government is exerting its power over. Yeah, they're picking people. them off a little bit at a time over a long period of time. But that's that's not going to be able to be sustained because but that's, the government but that's, is going dude. to be forced into a position where it's going to have to move against larger groups of people at once that, that will much feel larger, the pain. How much larger a group are you going to move against than the KKK? KKK My God, they is had, small. It they, they is in, small. Yeah, it okay, was but that was massive. a different. Okay, you, you, that was a different time with different technology, different capabilities, and, the and, and they they infiltrated, infiltrated the KKK over a, a, a significant period of time. Now, I will say this. Right. I will say this. If you are a part of any community that is outside of 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 what the government would like to see. And you are of in your community of a, is of any size whatsoever. You can almost guarantee that you have government operatives working, uh, right. well, talking to the, you on Facebook right now. Well, it's not just Facebook, face to face. No, I'm just saying the, as, the as KKK example. was infiltrated by the feds. They routed and figured out who was doing what, and in the end, people started suing the KKK and winning. So what do you think is going to happen to see, these? See, one thing I know. One thing I know about history is, and and you should know this too, is governments are not omniscient, omnipotent, and you're kind of creating an omniscient, omnipotent scenario for government that just doesn't exist. First of all, government is stupid. That you, you got to be. It's it's not the bestest and the brightest that choose to go into government. Uh, so so their talent pool is 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 not all that. 
Uh, so you have to weigh that in. Second of all, you you can see throughout history that there have plenty been plenty of governments, plenty of of governments that have far more control over people than this government has that that could not stand that ended up crumbling. So there's 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 no reason to believe that this government is going to have to the power to do what other governments could not do. When you see the 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 real the I mean on the right. The, the, the thing that is going to cause a lot more folks in the right to be prepared to pick up arms and do what they got to do is when they absolutely lose faith in rule of law. On the left, when they, they, when they lose faith that their government is going to allow them to uh, basically coerce people to accept what it is that they want them to accept, they're all, they're, I mean, actually, I'd say the left is much more ready and, and and when I say left and right, I'm referring to status left and status right. Uh, and, and I think we're there. I think that uh, right is just about lost faith and rule of law. And I think the left is, I, I think the left probably still has a little bit more hope that they can use government and the power of courts and whatever to 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 to, to get their way. And and the left is really they're in a much better position of power in America today than the right is, even though the right has. Uh, you know they have they have the the right has most governments but it doesn't matter because the left controls most of the bureauc bureaucracies of all of those governments and they certainly control the major institutions even the major economic institutions so yeah i i i don't think the government is in a great position right now i, I although i mean it it's it's because of the power that it has It'll probably hold on longer than other governments would have. Yeah, I just I don't see. <laughs> look, I see a lot of people who, you know, spout out, spout off on Facebook and other media sources um, about this, that, and the other thing. But the bottom line is, everybody still stops at stop signs. Everybody still stops at red lights. Right now, yeah. Most most people do whatever the court tells them to right now yeah yeah and i and i don't see that changing anytime soon i do the, the culture of of following the rules in the united states is so ingrained in, in the culture that uh wow my english is so good today <laughs> um that it's going to take a generation or more for that to break up i i just don't see it happening yeah, uh, I, don't I, think... I do. I th I think that 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 people are further along than you think, and you're going. I mean, and I will say that I, I again, I'm not saying anything's inevitable. Like, for instance, if, and I'm not rooting for this to happen. I'm just saying this is a possibility. the The biggest thing to keep the the people who tend to gravitate toward the right to keep them complacent. Is to is to give them the illusion of rule of law. If you can restore that illusion of rule of law, then you'll buy yourself a lot of time before they're willing to do anything. And one of the ways that you could do that is really cheap and really easy, and that is if you just arrest a bunch of leftists and throw them in jail. All of a sudden, boy, you could probably get the right back in line, like, 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 like pretty easily. Even Bye. even if you're still advancing against their liberties. If you just give them some heads on pikes and they say, look, look, see, it's working, man. We still have hope, you know, and then this other stuff isn't going good, but we got this stuff over here. So, yeah, yeah. And honestly, that, that might be the best well, thing that the, that. And uh, that's the, the and I, I have to say do. that there's some merit to what you're saying, because you keep hearing in, in various news sources that, hey, there there's rumors that, you know, uh, this person might actually be prosecuted from the last administration. And, yeah, you and give them a person... few of those. It's not really going to fundamentally change the reality of power for the for the right, but it'll sure feel like it, and, yeah, and that... it'll knock them back a lot. Oh, there may there may be an investigation into the get together on the tarmac. Well, dun, no, dun, no, dun. The, no, no, well, who's no, get there, together on what tarmac? It's it's not maybe uh, uh, of an investigation. You you see the okay, you're talking about the the meeting between uh, uh, Loretta Lynch and Bill Clinton on the tarmac uh, right before the uh, uh, 
FBI dude uh, Comey was about ready to announce what he was going to prosecute Hillary. I mean, that, of course, that looks that's obviously something was going on there. I mean, Occam's razor tells you something was happening. But no, what what they've come out with is the 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 FBI is reconsidering the ACLJ's uh, Freedom of Information Act request to get documentation on the uh, email exchanges between uh, 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 Loretta Lynch's team and Bill Clinton's team. That's the big story. That's hardly a big story. Yeah, I mean it's not. It's 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 a. It's a it's an important story, I guess you could say, but it's not. Nobody's going to jail. Nobody's being investigated. But but if you you know, and honestly, if the progressives were smart, they would be like, okay, we're gonna have to do straws here. Whoever gets the short straw, you screwed. Okay, we're giving you up. It's got to be somebody powerful. It's got to be Hillary. It's got to be Loretta Lynch. It's got to be James Comey. It's got to be Barack Obama. It's got to be somebody of note. Uh, and and you get together in a room and you get your little straws and you just pull it. Whoever pulls the short straw, you know, you probably need two or three people. You, you know why this will never happen? Because they're stupid. They don't know how no. to control the right. Because they know because they know that a Democrat won't get into the White House and they're going to dominate Congress for the next twenty years if that happens. But the thing is, the progressives don't. And they're going to fight it. Yeah, the progressives don't it. need Congress to control the United States anymore. They don't. They they have all the major institutions. You can have Congress all you want. It's just it's it's and 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 even you know the Republican Party is infiltrated. And maybe you can eventually clean it out. I don't know. But even if the Republicans win, who are you going to send up there? And even the people who go up there with their heart in the right place, ready to stand for rule of law, as soon as they get up there, they're going to find out where all the cool clubs are. And then the cool club people are going to say, you want to stay in these cool clubs? So that they, 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 I don't think that the progressives even need to worry about being in government anymore at the, at the highest level. They, they, all they got to do is stay in the bureaucracy and keep controlling the institutions. And, and you know what? Give them time. They stay in the bureaucracy. They control the institutions. Just a matter of time before they start producing enough people that'll just simply vote for them no matter what. So I don't think they have anything to lose by giving up some some high profile people. There. Uh, yeah, I, th I see it different. I don't think they're going to, and I think the the Republicans would. Fight oh no, it I don't. I don't think they're going to either. But I no. don't think they're going and to wait, because they're stupid. I think you missed the point. No, I think the Republicans would fight the sacrificial Democrat just as hard as Democrats would because they know. Oh, right. You're right they about know that. Their they, turn is going to come. Yes, because if you open the to. door for somebody to actually, you know, it's kind of like, you know, whatever cops, uh, uh, and I'm not, I mean, I'm not saying that every time you don't want to set a precedent. You don't want to set a precedent. That's why cops, you have a hard time actually prosecuting cops when they've actually done something wrong because you don't want to set a precedent. When you, when you, when you prosecute a cop and you expose cops for corruption, you're, cor you're exposing the whole system. And, Correct. And, and yeah, that's so, the, you don't want to. And do that, that is that's the that's a lot of the problem that's in the political spheres today is that both both sides know that if you really out a Republican for having done something really really bad, like seriously, like treason bad, the the ramifications for the left are not going to be that different a couple years later. The the right wingers are going to be gunning for the lefties in the same way, and you're going to start a war. Between a political war, not a civil war. Right. Well, and it could become a political, a civil war eventually. But uh, and yeah, I'm, 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 I'm not suggesting that civil war is inevitable. I don't know. I don't even want to engage in in percentages. I'll just say the things to look for would be if mm. you if you start seeing more shootings, like. Just recently, uh, I, I reported this. Uh, I run uh, a local publication called The Tiger Freedomist, and uh, I covered a story of uh, a man in Pennsylvania who was a rapid anti-Trumper living next to a Trump supporter. And the Trump supporter was a GOP uh, committeeman, and he, he pretty much executed him. You didn't hear much uh, talk about it. Uh, you start seeing more of those stories where – 
uh, progressives are killing conservatives and conservatives are killing progressives, uh, look out. Then you're, you're, you're going to see. And, and here's the biggest, the biggest, absolute biggest sign that you know the jig is up. Look out. If there is a major sports uh, uh, franchise, or maybe whether it's uh, the NFL, the NBA, the Major League Baseball, whatever, if it gets to a level where those institutions can't put on games, you also know you're screwed. <laughs> and uh, I guess the, the what fine... are you saying? They can't put on games because they're afraid of someone bombing the stadium or something? Who, or well, for whatever reason it is, whether it's economic, whether it's uh, fear of security, uh, whether whether people stop watching sports altogether because they're so wrapped up. I don't know. Uh, but, but I mean, I'm just saying that's, that's one of the key indicators that your culture is about ready to, to collapse. Uh, and then, uh, the other thing would be if you, if you start to see mass, uh, fights in the streets on a regular basis and then guns start to be pulled. And I, I, and honestly, if you look at what's happening, I mean, I've seen the evolution First, it was uh, the leftists were getting up in the Trump supporters' faces and yelling at them, shouting them down. Uh, then they started bringing sticks. They started bringing mace. And then the right started bringing sticks. So they started bringing mace. You know, base stick man, you know, he was the first dude. You know, it was him and a few others, you know, at the, the Battle of Berkeley. And, and they had the, the shield and all the gear. And now... You, at this last thing at Charlottesville, that they were geared up on both sides. They all had they. I mean, <laughs> they're they're fighting. It's like they're going through the evolution of of, of human warfare. You know, well, they're, they're and the now they're, they're up to the Spartans and the Greeks, right? You know, the Spartans and no. the Athenians right now. You know, they're, they're the hoplites are going to start to form. Yeah, but the the one thing you didn't mention in all of this is that in Charlottesville. There were three percenters standing there, not three, getting three percenters involved. and oath keepers. That, yeah, they and were I remember there to, watching, to keep the peace. I remember watching a video clip of uh, someone interviewing an Antifa member, and the guy's like, "Yeah, I'm Antifa, but I'm not. I'm not a radical. I just I'm anti-fascist, and I don't like these fascists here." And he was wearing all black, and he goes, "Well, I don't know if I'm Antifa or not, but I, I, I'm definitely anti-fascist." And he goes, okay, well, what is this guy here who's got a gun? What do you have to say? And the guy's like, uh, I ain't saying nothing. And he turns back to the kid in black. He goes, what's up with that? He goes, oh, he's a three percenter. You got to give him credit and respect. They're just here observing, and they're not getting involved on either side. Mad respect for these guys. All right, let's go kick some ass, man. Yeah! Yeah! yeah. So there are people with cool heads that are watching these Retard, uh, cool heads. The, the, the three percenters and the oath keepers—they come from a right perspective. Again, the right—they're—they're they're so. I mean, rule of law means so much. When you to say them. right, you mean politically right, not yeah, politi correct. No, no, right, politically right. And I'm using American terminology for for right and left. I have issues with how they use those terms, but that's another story. It doesn't matter. But they—they're—they're they're all about rule of law, so it's, it would be natural that. They would be producing groups like the three percenters and the oath keepers who what they want to see most is they want to see rule of law maintained. They understand. I think they understand that if they lose that, they lose they lose at least half the country. And the left is not so concerned about rule of law. That won't bother them as much. That's not their unifying point. Equality is their unifying point. And, you know, to get to equality, it, you know, sometimes rule of law gets in the way. And I would argue that the right is, is more than willing to throw rule of law aside. Uh, they just would rather do it in a polite, uh, uh, secret, backdoor kind of way and not openly, more openly like the left is, is, is willing to do. But for the right, it's not actual rule of law so much as the perception of rule of law that's important. And if you have, I mean, look at what happened in Charlottesville. And it happened in Berkeley. 
Testament. It happened in other places where these groups are coming together. You know well ahead of the time. You've been, you've been, it's been telegraphed weeks in advance that this is going to happen. You had in, in Charlottesville, you had, they, they had a thousand first responders there. They had city police, they had state police, they had National Guard. And what did they do? They, 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 they formed a line to to get the 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 you the, the unite the right people out of that park area where they wanted to do the, the the protest they formed a line across from the UTR from the UTR people they they're outnumbered maybe 10 to 1 that maybe 10 to 1 they're looking out across at a bunch of folks that are armed, that are are saying really, really vicious things. Now, to be fair, the UTR is saying really, really vicious things, and they're also armed. They're all ready for war. But the UTR looks across from them, and they're outnumbered 10 to 1, and the UTR is like, please let us through, please let us through. And the police, they, they simply prevented them from escaping, and they forced them into those crowds. This is the very opposite of rule of law. What the police did was execute a riot. Whether you are for or against whichever side, I, I'm not for any of them, but whether you're for or against whichever side, the police demonstrated a fundamental lack of respect for rule of law. Even if it's an illusion, the illusion is important. And and they they did a lot of damage to a lot of people on the right. Even, I mean, most people on the right wouldn't even support the UTR folks, but they do support rule of law. And when they see that, that's like, holy crap. And well, you had all kinds of time to prepare, and this is what you came up with? Force them into a crowd and melee a suit, and now you got a death? And then they didn't really get involved when the no when the punches started flying. They didn't at all. They stood back. No. Correct. And that's intentional. Absolutely Cause... intentional. Absolutely. To, us, so to get the retards to fight, mm -hmm. it's all entertaining the masses. That's all it is, dude. It's nothing new. It's the media and the state working together to get the masses all worked up. And for to what ends? To keep your eye off the real problems that America has. And the real problems America has, they're not Trump. It's... It's the overall governance that has, is starting to fail. I don't think there's going to be revolution out of that, but I think you're going to see uh, more of a slide into mediocrity. That, that's what I see. And there's not a whole lot you can do to stop it because the I, institutions have been usurped, just like you said. I, I kind of believe that uh, all of the... Well, but the institutions have been usurped, but they don't really reflect a fundamental portion of America. At least half of America, they they fundamentally do not reflect, and they 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 are actually an existential threat to 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 the other half of America. So the institutions have run out of answers. The you know so many worldviews have run out of answers. Christianity. American Christianity, I'll say specifically, has run out of answers. Uh, uh, atheism, American atheism, has run out of answers. There, none of them have found an answer to what has emerged with 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 technology today. That that's that's my take, and so I think that it's inevitable whether it's now or 10 years from now or 20 years from now, whenever it is, but it's inevitable that uh, one of three things will happen. This state will be absolutely destroyed and it will be replaced by a whole new state. Uh, uh, multiple states uh, will emerge or whoever, you know, the progressives are the ones in power. Uh, the, the demographics will shift and this will just become a progressive state. But I believe that the United States of America is poised to. I don't know what you're laughing at, but okay. My, my dog is farting. Oh, and good. And he's sitting right behind me. He doesn't like what I'm saying. But the United, no, it's the, just the it, United it's States filling of, the room with good stuff. Oh, good. The United States of America is poised to collapse, uh, or 
possibly, and now when I say United States of America, I mean the republic as you understand it, even though it's not really a republic, but let's pretend it is. The republic as you understand it, it's set to collapse and end as you know it, or about ready to see a revival that I personally don't want to see because it's going to be kind of like when the Roman Republic moved from being a republic running an empire to an empire running an empire. And that's not going to be good. That's what I see. And there are forces outside the United States that have a vested interest to see the United States fail. Yeah, and so and so, so so did uh, forces outside of the Roman Rome. Republic, and they worked diligently to undermine Rome. And in the oh, end, right. they I mean, and, and honestly, well, in the end, they succeeded. The empire rose in 32 BC, and it collapsed in uh, what? I, I, I mean, it, it kind of petered out. But I, I'd say its effectiveness was more or less done by 400 but still that's a 432 year stretch there buddy yeah they succeeded all right the people what's who, the stretch? who started and what's the stretch and what's the stretch for the united states much less much less they're not going to build an empire 400 years they may build an empire of 30 years uh, well that's I, what i'm saying yeah it, rome came down yeah everything and... is sped up everything is moving so much faster and and i mean there's there's nothing stopping the decline. I see. I see culture declining. I don't see the end of America. I don't see. I see radical changes like the ones that took place in the Industrial Revolution. Um, I mean, automation is really what's what's driving a lot of this uh, social strife. You know, people who are fat, happy, and rich don't typically want to revolt. They they typically want to live their lives and be happy, which is what they are. They're not going to go from a state of happiness to Hey, I'm happy, so I'm going to go out there and create a lot of misery for myself. A, a healthy person doesn't do that. So when you see people on the streets protesting, those people aren't happy, man. Well, some, of, the, some of them are actually, I'm not, no percentages, but some of them are on the streets actually because they're getting paid. They're, they're paid That's operatives. Different. That's but different. Outside the of the paid strife. operatives, yes. The, the social strife you're going to see is going to be coming down the pike because – Everyone keeps saying about bringing manufacturing back to America. Well, hey, dumbass, uh, we have double the manufacturing in America that we did in 1979. Um, what's changed is most of that is automated, and that's why you don't have jobs. It's not because they all went to China and the Philippines and India. It's because we have double the amount of manufacturing we did in the late 70s. But now automation has replaced your job. So that's the real issue here. You're, you're going to see – if you're going to see strife, you're going to see it because people are not living the lives they used to. Yeah. Gone, are, yeah, gone are the days where you can be an illiterate boob working for a steel mill who was getting paid 30 or $40 an hour who could barely read and write. And and, yeah. and you're buying yeah, that's, and you're buying that, that's done. You're buying Harley Davidsons and Camaros and you, your wife is a stay at home wife. You got a those two car days garage. Are correct. You have job security. Those those days ended well, quite a while ago. Correct. And people and are reality, still pining for them. Right. And the reality of bringing those jobs back is false. It is a false reality because. Those jobs are not coming back. They can't. When you have a robot that replaces 37 dudes. I am a robot. On, what? I am a robot. That replaces 37 people on one assembly line. Or that is replacing 12 people uh, pouring molten metal. You ain't getting that job back. They're not going to take the robot out that's been paid for to bring you in to pay you for the rest of your life. It ain't happening. So that's where a lot of the, I think, anxiety is coming from, from both the left and the right, because the unions are losing more and more and more workers to automation. We're, we're a little bit over time, so let's try to wrap this up. So, uh, and as automation and Amazon come online 
and the the traditional ways that people made a living start changing how do you survive in the new reality and people don't have answers and they're upset you know it's interesting the new reality is really difficult for a healer uh, collective to try to envision because right now what's emerging there's no answer for how how do you provide a way of life for the unskilled for the vast unskilled you can't there's no answer right now i'm not saying you can't i think let me maybe, make this a, 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 let me, what, what we understand today technology where we're at today there's no answer to that question let me make this point that is very important population density is a liability you're seeing it throughout the entire Middle East. They have more people than they know what to do with. Dude, population they, density is a myth. It's you're, a you're, liability. You're, you're, you're talking about, I, I would want to clarify, population density in, cho in choice regions. Because there's vast space for human beings to live in that's, that's not being well, used. But, well, population density within any state. Like, if you look at Egypt, they have... How many tens of millions of people who are unemployed? And they're, they and they're concentrated have... in, 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 in population centers rather than spread right. out. Well, population density is a liability. It used to be that if you had big cities and you had lots of people. You needed it. Was, the Industrial well, Revolution to, is what to produced to these massive right. cities. Population density was the opposite of a liability. It was an asset. So when, when you looked at a country and you said, wow. Look at them. They're 100 million people and they have a big army and they produce a lot of stuff. Well, the opposite now is true when you look at countries like Israel and Switzerland, where they're not big countries, but they're well organized and they're not overpopulated. So when you look at other countries like Egypt and Turkey, who have high populations and gr very um, growing populations that are growing quickly, um, Without jobs, that's an issue. That's a really big issue. And it's been an issue, not just now, but in the past. And if you look at it from a historic perspective, when you have a bunch of people that got nothing to do, you got Rome. And when you got Rome, you got um, an unstable, well, you have unstable periods in, in the Roman Empire. So I think we're going to enter a period of instability but i don't think america is going to break up and i don't think uh you're going to look at revolution i think i think, I think that you i won't and i won't say that oh yes you're definitely going to look at revolution or you're definitely going to look i'm going to say that i would say it it definitely favors civil war revolution and america not being what it is so we're 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 not not in agreement there. Well, I think that we're in, in agreement as far as possibly. Well, I'm going to wrap the show up, and I want to say maybe if if <laughs> if 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 you would like to be left the heck alone, if you prefer to be left alone, then uh, I would say there's a few things that you can do to at least try to affect the world around you. I think one of the things is to not engage in the Nazi versus commie uh, uh, battles. Uh, unless you know somebody's personally uh, 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 threatening you, um, I'm, I'm not saying that you're an apologist for Nazis or commies, but I'm saying that when when you wanna when you wanna spend a vast part of your life targeting commies, targeting Nazis, I am telling you that the commies and the Nazis are not the threat. The threat is is very pragmatic, and the threat will actually switch wherever it needs to switch. Whether it needs to switch more towards the commie direction or the Nazi direction, whatever the case might be, the fundamental threat is the people that want to hold on to power and increase power. And the best thing that you can do is try to create power for yourself and to create opportunities uh, and options to be able to, to not be dependent on on the powers that be around you and to be prepared if and when you have to to clear out if the need arises whether or not you believe that you're headed to civil war or not even if it never happens this is still 
the I believe the the the, the best choice. Move and don't get involved. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So, well, well, uh, we're we're actually going to be back Monday. We we are uh, we 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 weren't we weren't on Monday because of me. I had an issue come up. I had to take care of. Uh, but next Monday, we have uh, Donnie uh, Gebert on, and he is uh, uh, he's going to talk to us about an idea. Uh, I I the way that I phrase it, I'm calling it the blockchain legislature. And how you can use a blockchain to basically make everybody who participates in this blockchain a legislature who can decide what 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 programs they'll fund, what programs they won't fund. And we're going to talk to him about what that looks like, especially from the perspective of of self-defense, self-reliance and, you know, gun rights and and security and stuff like that. So. We'll we'll be back next Monday at uh, between eight and nine, our our more normal uh, time. And as usual, anything that you want to find for me, you go to istv.me. I have all the links to all my Facebook pages and all the other stuff that that I do. You'll find uh, Professor Rambo there as well. And uh, uh, and come back come back here next week to the Liberty Principle page, where we will talk. The blockchain legislature. We'll see you next week, everybody. Bye, y'all. Bye, y'all. Wait, why don't you say your little thing? Go ahead. Kalinikta. 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 That's an easy one. Yeah. Which means? Good night. Good night. That's it. Kalinikta, good night. Good night.